Welcome folks to Planescape Torment. Now you might be saying, what's the game hoarder think he's doing starting another Bioware Black Isle game? Well, I'm crazy. I don't give a shit. There's no real good LP in English of this on YouTube. And I'm doing it first. I think. So without further ado, Dive in. A new life. Now, Planescape Torment is a little bit different than your average hack and slack DD type game where normally I would put a lot into strength, dexterity, and constitution. Uh, this game actually relies more on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. A lot of dialogue options are closed to you if you don't have that. Wisdom is super huge because you get experience point bonuses. So jack that up to 18 right away. Constitution. There's other ways to raise constitution as well with the other stats. So now we're going to leave that at 9. To open up some other dialogue options, we're going to raise the charisma to 13. There's our dexterity to 11 intelligence to 15. Well, the first time I played this game I just made a straight fighter and hack and slashed my way through it and it was pretty lame. I'm gonna try it a little bit different this time. Hey, Chief. You okay? You playing corpse or you putting the blinds on the dusties? I thought you were a debtor for sure. Who? Who are you? So Morty is the flying skull here. I'm, who am I? How about you, Stark? Who are you? I... I don't remember. Can't remember your name, eh? Well, next time you spend night in this bird, go easy on Bub. Name is Morty. I'm trapped here too. Trapped? Yeah. Since you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's the chance. Tried all the doors, and this room is locked tighter than a chastity belt. We're locked in. Where? What is this place? It's called the mortuary. Big black structure with all the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. Mortuary? What? Am I dead? Not from where I'm standing. You got scars aplenty, though. Looks like some Bert painted you with a knife. All the more reason to give this place the laugh before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars? How bad are they? Well, the carvings on your chest aren't too bad, but the ones on your back. Say, looks like you got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. Spells out something. Tattoos on my back? What do they say? Eh, looks like you come with directions. <clears throat> Let's see. I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of Sticks Watch, but you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is a journal that'll shed some light on the dark of the matter. Ferrod can fill you in on the rest of the chant. He's not in the dead book already. Ferrod. Does it say anything else? Yeah, there's a bit more. Let's see. It goes on. Don't lose the journal, or we'll be up the sticks again. And whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are, what happens to you, or they'll put you on the quick pilgrimage to crematorium. Do what I tell you. Read the journal and find Ferrod. No wonder my back hurts. There's a damn novel written there. As for that journal I'm supposed to have with me, is there one with me while I was lying here? No. You were stripped of skins when you arrived here. Sides look like you got enough on a journal penned on your body. What about Furrod? Do you know him? 
Nobody I know, but then again, I don't know many people. Still, some's Bert got to know where you find Farrod. Uh, once we get out of here, that is. How do we get out of here? Well, all doors are locked, so we'll need a key. Chances are, one of the walking corpse in this room has it. Walking corpse? Yeah, the mortuary keeps used dead bodies as cheap labor. Corpses are dumb as stones, but they're harmless. They won't attack you unless you attack first. Is there some other way? I don't want to kill them just for a key. What? Think it's gonna hurt their feelings? They're dead! If you want a bright side of this, if you kill them, at least they'll have a rest before the keepers raise them up to work again. Well, alright. I'll take one of them down and get the key. Well, before you do that, arm yourself. I think there's a scalpel on one of the shelves over there. Alright, I'll look for one. One last thing. These corpses are slow as molasses. But getting punched by one of them is like getting kissed by a battering ram. If they start getting the edge on you, remember, you can run. And they can't use it to keep some distance you need to recover. Alright. Thanks for the advice. Alright, so here we are in the game. As you can see, very Boulder, Baldur's Gate, uh, Icewind Dale looking. Uh, we have a little wheel here, which is a little bit different. It's our inventory screen where we have our gold, hit points, our name, which we are the nameless one, our backpack, and of course. Don't want to part with that. We have our eyeball, which we don't want to part with. Apparently, have our statistic screen here. Which as our class, you can turn into a mage and f uh, thief as the game progresses. Um, there's a trick to multi-class, which normally you can't do, but I'm not sure I'm even going to bother with it. You have your journal screen, beast, which kind of gives you background on everybody. Mage and Spell Book, which of course is empty right now. Morty is a fighter. There's all his stats. And you have alignment here, which you actually don't pick, but is decided for you based on your actions during the game. So right now I believe we're uh, neutral. True neutral. Haven't tipped the scale one way or the other. All right, and then we have the map screen, which is very reminiscent of the other ones. You can also add notes here, which is kind of cool. And we have a world map as well. Right now in the hive, you can see other areas here. Super nifty. All right, back to the game. Where's that scalpel? Take some bandages here. And there's a scalpel. Alright, you found the scalpel. Now go get those corpses. Don't worry, I'll stay back and provide valuable tactical advice. Maybe you could help me, Morty. I will be helping you. Good advice is hard to come by. I meant help in attacking the corpse. Me? I'm a romantic, not a soldier. I just get in the way. When I attack this corpse, you better be right there with me, or you'll be the next thing I plunge a scalpel in. Eh, alright, I'll help you. And of course, they give you instructions on... Uh, attacking with other party members. I'm glad we understand each other. Time to introduce this corpse to a second deathbed. Let's go. Alright, 
first. Jesus. Good as done. Got more to kick in my own ass there. I didn't mean to do that. Alright. The shambling corpse looks like it's been dead for several years. The skin along its forehead is peeled back. Revealing its chalk white skull. Someone has chiseled the number 569 into the exposed bone. Examine the corpse to see if it's carrying the key. This corpse doesn't appear to be carrying the key, and it doesn't look like it would be able to use one if it did. Its fingers are broken, as if someone smashed them with a hammer. You do happen to notice that its left shoulder is heavily bandaged. The bandages might be useful if the corpse was disposed of first. Guess you don't have it. I don't happen to know which one of your other corpse friend has the key out of this place. Uh, Chief, they can't hear you, alright? They're dead. But you're dead, and you're talking to me. Yeah, but I'm special. Death couldn't kill my zest for life. These corpses here, eh, they probably didn't have much personality to begin with. I see. Look, Chief, watching you trying to swap the chant with these corpses isn't doing much for my morale. Let's leave the corpse stock for the barmies, all right? All right, let's go. Get out of attack. It's been too too damn long. There we go. Damn. Critical miss, alright. Well, he's fighting back now. Alright, getting 65 experience. I'm gone. As you can see, you can see the nameless one uh, regenerating. You regenerate naturally. Oh, fucked him up. Come on, Morty, get in there. Now we're talking. There's the room key. Show you the opening, right? I uh, might not, might not play in. Uh, I have this in windowed mode, so might not play. Oh well, that's that's tough, Titty. All right. This corpse looks like someone turned it inside out. The machine at the head of the table has peeled the skin off the forehead give direct access to the skull. Looks like someone is in the middle of dissecting this corpse. This slab is covered with 
dried blood and other remains. Alright. Locked and you will need a key. Well, Morty has the key. And there we go. Some advice, Chief. Keep it quiet from here on. No need to put in any more corpses in the dead book than necessary. Especially the Fems. Plus, killing them might draw the caretakers here. I don't think you mentioned it before. Who are these caretakers? They call themselves the Dustmen. You can't miss them. They have an obsession with black rigor mortis on the face. They're an addled bunch of ghoulish death worshippers. They believe everybody should die sooner, better than later. I'm confused. What do the Dustmen care if I escape? Weren't you listening? You said the Dusties believe everybody's gotta die sooner, better than later. You think the corpses you've seen are happier than a dead book than out of it? Before you said something about making sure I didn't kill any female corpses. Why? What? Are you... Are you serious? Look, Chief, these dead shits are the last chance for a couple of hardy bashers like us. We need to be chivalrous. No hacking them up for keys, no lopping their limbs off, things like that. Last chance? What are you talking about? Chief, they're dead. We're dead. See where I'm going, eh? Eh? It's a horny little floating skull right there. Can't be serious. Chief, we've already got an opening line with the limping ladies. We've all died at least once. We'll have something to talk about. We'll appreciate men with our kind of death experience. Wait, didn't you say before that I'm not dead? Well, all right. You might not be dead, but I am. And from where I'm standing, I wouldn't mind sharing a coffin with some of these fine scenery cadavers I see here. As if... Of course, the caretakers would have to part with them first, and that's not likely. Where do all these corpses come from? Death visits the plains every day, Chief. These shamblers are all that's left of the poor sods who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. All right, I'll try to remember that. Look, Chief, it's obvious you're still a little addled after you kiss with death, so I got two bits of advice for you. One, if you got questions, ask me, all right? All right. If I have any questions, I'll ask you. Second, if you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing shit down. Whenever you come across something that might be important, jot it down so you don't forget. If I had that journal I was supposed to have with me, I'd do that. Start a new one then, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around you with the last. All right, it couldn't hurt. I'll make a new one then. Use it to keep track of your movements. If you ever start to get cloudy on important things like who you are, or more importantly, who I am, use it to refresh your memory. All right, I got it. Let's go. Updated my journal. Updated my journal. I say we kill these motherfuckers. Done. Hey, baby. The shambling corpse gazes at you with vacant eyes. Her skin is paper thin, almost wispy, like somebody draped a sheet of cobwebs over her frame. The number 594 has been scratched into her forehead with a charcoal pencil. So, doing anything later? The corpse continues to stare at you. Well, farewell then. Psst. See the way she was looking at me, huh? You see that? The way she was following the curve of my optical bone? A sit what some fucking word, not optical though. What are you talking about? But are you blind? She was scouting me out. It was shameless the way she wanted me. <laughs> Whatever, Morty. Let's go. The left side of this woman's face looks as if it was caved in with a club. 
and her flesh sags and bruised swollen clumps over her ruined skull. Number 626 has been stitched into the corpse's right cheek, just below the eye. Oh, nasty wound you got there. The corpse continues to stare at you with its one good eye. I'm gone. These girls aren't too talkative. I'm gone. What about Mohawk here? This corpse is lumbering along a triangular path. Once it reaches one of the corners of the triangle, it pauses, then turns and staggers toward the next corner. It has 965 tattooed on the side of its skull. To you approach, it halts and stares at you. Heh! <laughs> it's like someone forgot to tell this sod to stop walking the rule of three. What do you mean? These corpses don't have much left in the attic, so they can't do more than one task at a time. When they're told to do something, they'll keep doing it until someone tells them to stop. This poor sod probably finished some task and then they forgot to tell him. You said something about the rule of three. What did you mean by that? Updated my journal. Ah, well, the rule of three is one of those laws about the planes, about things tending to happen in threes. Where everything's comprised of three parts. There's always three choices, and so forth and so on. You don't sound like you hold much faith in it. It's a load of wash, if you ask me. You look for any number, try to attach some great meaning to it. You're gonna find plenty of coincidences. I see. Before you said someone put this corpse to a task and forgot to tell them to stop, who gives these corpses their task to do? Either one of the caretakers here, or else whatever necromancer raised them out of the dead book. Probably one of the caretakers here. They're the ones who need the cheap labor, after all. Understood. I want to examine this zombie a bit more. So, why are you walking in a triangle? No answer. What a bunch of deadbeats. Alright. Alright. This female corpse is making the rounds from slab to slab in her room. Her hair is knotted with a long braid and looped around her neck like a noose. Someone has stenciled the number 1096 into her forehead, and her lips have been stitched close. Uh, nice braid. The corpse does not respond. You doubt it even knows you're there. Dog, look at this crazy fool floating in front of a gigantic book. All right. All right. This corpse has been completely wrapped in bandages, like a mummy. The smell of formaldehyde emanating from this corpse is particularly strong. It smells like it was applied recently, with good reason. This corpse appears to be in the advanced stage of decay. Her jaw is missing and some of the flesh has slid off her skull, revealing the number 1072 chiseled into the bone. I think this one seems better days. The corpse does not respond to your voice. The fact it has no jaw may have something to do with it. Either that or it has nothing to say. Dumb. Receiving room logbook. This huge logbook lists mortuary procedures in the tight crab script. All shells entering the mortuary are to be delivered to the receiving room and logged with the scribe on duty before embalmed or cremated. The records are to be checked to be determined if the shell is one of the contracted, and if so, do prepare the shell. Move the shell to one of the preparation rooms, contact the scribe on duty, and notify him that the contracted shell is to be raised. Be certain that a shell is thoroughly stripped of its possessions before being sent to the preparation room. The contracted workers are intended for simple manual labor and do not have the capacity to search and strip a shell. The faction is not responsible for any possessions lost or items stolen by collectors who have brought the shells to the mortuary. The shell's possessions are to be stored in the receiving room until an initiate can be sent to claim them. Catalog all possessions in the logbook. If 
Following this list is thousands of entries of bodies that have been sent to the receiving room. As you flip through the rest of the book, however, you notice the last page has been cut out. Interesting. Sure, why not? This corpse is shuffling from slab to slab, bandaging the corpses lying there. The number 396 is carved into his left temple, and his lips are stitched closed. You notice the corpse is carrying a roll of bandages in his hand. They look usable. Mind if I borrow those bandages? The corpse continues to stare at you. Let's try to take the bandages. You snake your hand out. Take the roll of bandages from the corpse's hand. The corpse doesn't even seem to notice. It continues going through the motions of bandaging the bodies. Alright, got some free bandages. The number 1201 has been inked on the forehead of this corpse, and the ink run down the, runs down its eyes, cheeks, and jaw. As you follow the ink, tears down the corpse's face, you notice run into the stitching ceiling, the corpse's lips caught on what looks like a corner of a note stuck in the corpse's mouth. The note has mingled with the accord in the zombie's mouth. You tried to pull the paper out through the cross stitches, it would tear the paper to shreds. Hacking up the corpse to get at it looks like a way to destroy the note. You need to find a delicate way to remove the stitches before removing the note. Well, let's cut them with the scalpel. Gain 250 experience. You deftly slice through the stitches, sealing the corpse's mouth, and the jaw sags open. You carefully pull the note from the corpse's mouth. Despite the condition of the paper, the writing on it still appears legible. Let's check out the note. Note from Corpse 1201. This is a foul-smelling note retrieved from the mouth of one of the mortuary zombies. Looks like it was sewn into the corpse's mouth by accident. Despite its condition, the writing is legible. Please, to whatever dustman reads this, I beg of you. I know my legal obligation under the terms of the debt contract, but I am prepared to offer more than my signing fee if you will cremate my body rather than raising it. I have arranged for you this note to be left with my body upon death. If you are reading this, then please use the note instru as instructed and accept the result in exchange for my contract and duty. Let my contract number serve as the key. Looks like the corpse was too late to prevent the raising, but you notice that beneath the writing is a diagram. Looks like directions for folding a parchment into a strange pattern. If you are ever capable of examining an object further or performing an action, the use button will appear. This button allows you to manipulate the item through a dialogue screen. The foul-smelling note has a strange-looking diagram inscribed beneath the writing. It looks as if it's instructing you to fold the corners of the note so the points touch the center. There's a series of strange marks on each corner. One mark in the upper right, two marks in the lower right, three marks on the lower left, and no marks in the upper left. Fold the upper right. Let's fold the lower right and the upper left and the upper right back to the center. As you fold the upper right corner back to the center, the lower left corner mirrors the action until all corners touch in the center. You watch for a moment and the corners of the paper raise, turning the note into a small four sided pyramid. You peel back the sides of the pyramid and the paper disintegrates to dust. Inside is a small triangle shaped earring that catches the light and gleams brightly. Alright, we have an earring. Some items are magical but required to be identified. You see the small earring? It's beautiful, but despite its beauty, all it seems to do is remind you of how strange this world is that you've woken up to. I'll identify it with nothing. We'll wear that for now until we can identify it later. I'm gone. Who's this guy?
Walking corpse is a number 1094 carving to its forehead. Its mouth has been sewn tightly shut. Chemical reek of fresh formaldehyde hangs in the overpowering cloud around it. Despite the pallid, sunken features and lifeless, milky eyes, it is clear that this was once a handsome young man. So, seen anything interesting going on? The corpse is retarded to boot. Alright, folks. Well, that'll about wrap it up for this video. We'll continue in the next one, and we will talk to this strange character by the name of Doll. See you then for some more Planescape Torment.